this is our small sugar house up here. Uh, you can see the woods are all on a vacuum tubing. This is the most modern way of collecting sap now. Most people are getting away from the buckets and the collection. Um, this is much easier. You're not sloshing around the woods dumping sap into your boots anymore. The sap is conducted through these pipes. It goes down to a vacuum house here. It's all collected right there at a main tank and pumped up into the sugar house and boiled. So it's, it's made it very easy these days. Um, you'll notice most of your producers nowadays are getting away from the buckets and trying to make it more efficient, more uh, less labor intense. I mean that was your biggest expense in a sugar bush was paying people to have to go out and gather the buckets and it was just a big collection. Now they can eliminate all that and a lot of these guys are one or two man operations anymore. There's They've turned it into a business, basically. There's no more late night boilings like the old grandfathers used to do. Uh, it's basically they want to come in there in the morning, start boiling, and be out of here by five, six o'clock for dinner. So okay. everything is just more efficient. Well, this is this is some new technology okay. that's just come out, where we are able to take a drop off the tree during the off season, put it on here, tap this tree, we've got a tap that goes on the end of here, to get the drill running in the right direction, good clean tap, it's running really good, we'll put this in, we won't tap it, and then we'll hook up this stubby right on there, and that's the first tap that's gone in this season in this woods and you can see it moving down through here when the ground freezes these these trees are just like giant pumps the water is actually sucked up from the ground the groundwater and what it does is it mixes with the sugars that are stored in the roots of this tree that's a process that happens in the fall the leaves come off the roots actually store the sugars. They come up through and through a very complex process, once it starts to thaw out, gases build in the tree and that's when you start seeing sap going out. There's actually, inside this tree is about 30 PSI. It's about the, uh, it would be about the, uh, the inflation rate of an of a automobile tire. And so you'll get that kind of pressure on the outside. Oh. How many taps do you have here? We've got uh, pretty close to 1,500 in this room. And how much, like, will this sugar bush right here, how much sap, Jeff, will it, it produce? Uh, this well, I think more in terms of syrup. Okay. The end result. So, uh, you know, it should produce four or five hundred gallons. Well, the sap comes in over here. This is the raw sap out of the trees. And we bring it in uh, via pipeline or via truck. And we run it through a filter into a, uh, another tank over here which then feeds the reverse osmosis equipment that we have and what that does essentially is take out excess water uh, the whole process of making syrup is getting rid of the excess water uh, typically tree sap is about two percent sugars and we need to get that up to about 67 or so percent sugar and in the past it's strictly been an evaporation process uh, the reverse osmosis process lets us take uh, depending between 70 and 95 percent of the water out <clears throat> prior to going in the evaporator so it makes the evaporator a lot more efficient and we make a lot more syrup per hour and per quart of wood when we're boiling to finish uh, at two percent sap it needs uh, we need to get rid of about 43 gallons of, of water if we can get rid of 35 or 40 or close to 40 of those gallons 
through the reverse osmosis then the boiling process then uh, is, is greatly speeded up. And with the number of taps that we have uh, and the size of evaporator, there's no way that we could process the sap that we produce here on a three and a half by 13 foot evaporator. Um, it's, it's not built for that many taps without the RO. Thank you.